Namaste viewers, welcome you all to the episode 5 of uh, NICU Diaries and to answer to your queries, I have Dr. Ravi Swami and I have Dr. Sanjeeva Reddy here. The first question is about uh, what are the protocols that we use in our NICU to prevent infections and how do we manage uh, when they occur? Infections are the most commonest uh, problem what we see in NICU because the babies have got very minimal defense. But the simplest thing which we enforce for all parents or uh, all the healthcare professionals are to wash their hands. So just even before you enter the NICU, you will see that we are quite strict on washing your hands, wearing a separate gowns, uh, changing your footwear and stuff. This itself is more than sufficient to reduce most of the infections in NICU. So these are the usual ways how we limit and prevent infections. What would be uh, any adverse effects that we can see in NICU care of babies? Uh, NICU per se, we cannot generalize the adverse effects. It all depends on uh, why a particular baby is admitted to NICU. So if a baby is admitted for infection treatment, uh, the adverse effects will relate to the medications that we use. And sometimes if the baby is admitted uh, for treatment of jaundice, the effects will depend the treatment that we use, the phototherapy light and also the complications of the jaundice itself. But uh, NICU per se uh, will not leave any adverse effects as such. Babies admitted in NICU, will they have a healthy life later or do they have any long term complications that would stay? So this has been well studied. So we are always interested in looking at the long term neurodevelopmental outcomes for babies, usually between 18 months to 24 months. Depending on the condition, most of the premature babies, that's the most common uh, admission to the NICU. Preterm babies, if you say you have about 100 babies in NICU, 80 to 85 should not have any issues depending again on the gestation but remaining 15 percent we do look into complications especially in their motor problems like they're able to walk and whether they're able to use their hands and so on similarly we do see issues with their speech and in their behavior how do we support the parents and families uh, during their stay is there any different way that we do or how do we support them so NICU environment is uh, very unique, uh, only patient is allowed to stay inside the unit but again there is key differences between adult ICU and uh, NICU for example whereas adult patient is cared for in a normal kind of a bed. For babies we may have uh, a cot which is uh, suited for the size of the baby or we may have uh, a special incubator uh, which helps in maintaining the temperature of the baby. So parents may find it a little bit difficult to have access to babies all the time but we will try and do our best to allow the visiting hours unrestricted uh, access to stay with the baby for as long as it's possible but we have a feeding room next to the unit where they can so sit and rest for as long as they want and more importantly we provide information on a regular basis so they are up to date about what's going on with the baby and they can kind of feel relaxed about what's going on inside. How do you approach uh, pain management and comfort measures for infants in NICU? Okay, so again, depending on what the problem is, we can uh, decide. So the most commonest way is how we manage pain in babies who are undergoing any form of procedures. For example, we're doing any blood test or we're putting a cannula or something. Then it's well, well uh, proven beyond doubt that sucrose, uh, which is a sugary water, does help in pain relief. So yeah, depending on the threshold for pain, we decide on the medicines what we need to use. Thank you so much uh, viewers for watching. We'll see you again in the episode 6.